Hello, my name is Marlene Turpin. I am the granddaughter of Oscar and Anna Maria Dents and the daughter of Anna Dents Turpin. My grandparents and mother were victims of National Socialism because they were Jehovah's Witnesses. I grew up in the United States knowing my grandparents and mother's story during the time of Hitler. I knew that they were, the three of them were arrested February in 1938, bringing over banned Jehovah's Witness literature. The literature as early as 1929 was boldly and publicly declaring the problems and perils that would come from the National Socialism philosophy and totalitarian governments. This was long before many people in the world even knew what was going on in Germany. After their arrest, my grandparents each received a two-year sentence in prison, and my mother was temporarily released to the custody of her aunt, who was one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I remember my mother told me that at that point, she firmly decided in her heart she was going to remain faithful, a faithful Jehovah's Witness, no matter what came, whether she stayed with her aunt or whether she was assigned to live with a German family. She was going to remain faithful and wait to be reunited with her parents. Well, that all changed very quickly when the branch office of Jehovah's Witnesses in Bern, Switzerland, found out that my grandparents had been arrested and that my mother, who was only 14, was basically on her own. They made immediate arrangements to bring her over to uh, Bern there, to the branch office. They sent a young man over and he helped her get across the border to safety in Switzerland. The sad thing is my mother was never reunited with her parents. She never saw them again. While she was living and growing up there in Bern, my grandparents each finished their sentences in prison and freedom was there. They were going to be released, but there's one caveat. They had to sign a declaration renouncing their religion, renouncing their beliefs, and provide the names of Jehovah's Witnesses that they knew in Germany. And this was unacceptable. Both refused to sign because they were both convinced that there's no government, whether in Germany or around the world, that can provide the solutions that people need, especially someone like the dictator Adolf Hitler. So, consequently, my grandmother went to Gottesell prison for a short period of time and then was transferred to Ravensbrück, where she died in 1942. My grandfather initially went to Dachau and then uh, was transferred to Mauthausen, where he died also in 1942. My mother, still in Bern, um, eventually met my father, who came to visit the branch. And after a period of time, they got married and moved to the United States, where I was born in 1951. Now, an interesting thing happened in 1990. I had the privilege of returning to, going with my mother who was returning to Lurok for the first time since she fled over 53 years prior to that. I got to meet all my family and get to know them. And we were able to visit all the places my mother knew and loved. We tried to visit her, the old apartment where she and her parents lived on Louisenstrasse. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get in. However, she did share with me many wonderful memories she had there. Now, another remarkable thing that happened was 10 years later in the year 2000. A woman uh, near the rock was reading in the paper about a historical exhibition that was taking place in the rock that described the history of Jehovah's Witnesses during the Nazi years. The story included my grandparents and mothers uh, experience and it had pictures. So this woman remembered that back in the 80s at a marketplace she bought a used sewing basket. When she got the sewing basket home in the bottom she found letters on concentration camp stationery and pictures. The pictures corresponded with the pictures in the newspaper 
and she knew then that this sewing basket and those letters and pictures belonged to this family. So she got in touch with the journalist, uh, and it was just a matter of a few weeks before my mother had these letters in her hand. 42 letters and pictures. These were precious letters for her, and they revealed two important things for her. One, her parents had an undying love and concern for her. All those years, she didn't know what happened. They were worried about her. And two, the second important thing is that they, their unbreakable faith was what gave them the strength to get through what they had to endure. So knowing that my mother who passed away in 2013, I am sure would have made the trip to come over. She would have loved to have been there. So on her behalf, I'm going to thank, uh, as well as the behalf of my grandparents, I'm going to thank the artist, Gunter Demnick, for uh, providing this memorial for victims of na uh, National Socialism. Thank you so much. I want to thank the city of Lurok for approving the Stolpersteiner event and allowing it to take place. And finally, I would like to thank um, Dr. Marcus Hoffman for the time and effort that he spent helping to bring these events to fruition. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart.